Welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week we are going to talk to you about circulation rules and get excited because we're about to kick off a whole month of circ rules in Koha for Monday Minutes. We could probably do a whole year with circ rules. But we could, we could. With a month. Okay, let me start sharing my screen. We thought we'd start off a little um, smaller versus going big picture. So we're going to just talk about adding a circ rule to your circulation matrix, mostly for that single branch library. Maybe they've created a new item type or they need to potentially edit a circ rule that's in existence. Perfect. So maybe you have added a new item type or a new patron category. This example we're going to show you today will help you set it up. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I've had two tickets this week about new circ rules because of new item types. Under administration, we'll have circulation and fine rules. And we're gonna focus on this top half, which is your circulation and fine rule matrix. So you always wanna think about your circulation fine rules as defining the most general first. So you'll notice that we have that all, all rule down at the bottom. That's pretty important to have as that helps tell Koha, like if it doesn't find any other rule in the system, there's always one rule to fall back on. Then as you work your way up, you can focus on either all patron categories and individual item types or an individual patron category and individual item types. The beautiful thing about Koha is as you add those new rules, Koha will put where it needs to go in the list. I know from training over the years, a lot of other ILSs force you into putting them into that kind of, you know, rainfall of, of where it would, would be in the matrix, but Koha will do that for you. Yeah. The educators and I were just talking about that, that there was a system that you had to do one, two, three, four. And I'm like, oh, my brain doesn't think like that. I'm glad yeah. Koha organizes them for you. So let's just break this down. We added some garden tools. I hear this is a very popular thing to loan out at libraries. So we're going to give this more general rule to say everybody can check out garden tools. So I'm gonna keep my patron category all. Then I'm going to pick the item type garden tool. So now it's saying everybody can check out a garden tool and then I start going across. We have a little note field. So you could add a note to this and I find that this is really helpful. Maybe it's a temporary rule and you wanna remove it later. I'm definitely pandemic, you know, would have made somebody, some libraries change some rules and then wanna change them back. How many garden tools do you think we should be allow patrons to check out? Maybe one or two? Yeah, I was gonna say three, so let's do that. Yeah, two, let's start with two. That's right in the middle of our guests. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, probably it's not an on-site checkout, so we'll pass that. How long do you think we should give for our garden tools? Like a week? Yeah, I like a week. We just planted our tomatoes and peppers last weekend. So I will say that, you know, that was a two day project for us. Yeah, exactly. Over the, the weekend yeah. or a long weekend. Um, I don't think we need to charge any fines, but if we did, um, oh, I should stop. Unit, you can break this out by hours or by days. So I'm going to pass um, the days and hours. So I'll keep it at days. Fine amount. If you do assign a fine am amount, you do need to have this charging interval. So Koha knows to charge it and at what interval and one would be every day that it is overdue. If there is a grace period, so if you wanted to give them a one day grace period before that fine began, you could add that here. So that's a numeric number. Ooh, overdone. We don't need to do our overdue fines because we're not charging fines on this. Jesse, have you had anybody use suspension at all? Not in the United States. Yeah, me neither. So these three columns are more of a European, international way of using the COHA circulation matrix and circulation in the library. Although in theory, I do like it. Okay. I'll talk about that more later with you. Um, renewals allowed. I think they could probably renew the garden tool maybe once and they get another seven days. Automatic renewals. We've had a lot of libraries use this. We've got great documentation. If you are interested in making any of your rules set up to automatic renew, 
this is really a helpful thing for libraries, especially during a pandemic. But if you did want to set that up, we do have some documentation and we'll link that in this blog post. Perfect. Ooh, holds. Um, maybe if somebody can place a hold, a hold on a spade or, yeah. I would think it's first come first serve, but I mean like, I, who knows? Who knows, exactly. And then you have holds allowed daily. That's a newer column to say a patron can only put so many holds per day. If you tab through these, they will go to unlimited. So you do wanna make sure that if you it is a zero, you should put that zero in there. Excellent. We're gonna pass all those on shelf holds. Um, they fall on the table. On shelf holds. So if I could put something on hold that is sitting on the shelf, or I couldn't. We're saying no to holds, but that is a big decision for a lot of libraries to say yes, you can place something on hold that's sitting on the shelf, or you can't. Excellent. Um, OPAC level holds. So say we had one big bib and it was like shovel, spade. Um, Oh, would you want a patron, if you were allowing holes to say, I want this specific item, um, thinking of magazines as well, like I definitely want the fall issue, um, I want the January issue for whatever reason, or DVDs. So this is important to know that that exists. And then you have um, article requests. So I don't think we're gonna do any article requests on our, on our garden tools. <laughs> All right. So now we can see that it's added that rule into the middle of our matrix. And as we scroll across, we can see any type of update that we've made. Now I do wanna say, Kelly, this has gotten very long over the years that we've been training on, on Koha. And there has been some um, ease of use added into the matrix. So like if we would click that edit for garden tools, maybe mm -hmm. we wanted to go back and adjust something, it does highlight it so we can see it down below. And, and that is very helpful. And it will automatically default to that bottom row. Um, there's also the header down below. That's another enhancement that has come over the years because you'd have to scroll all the way up to the top. And if you've had 30 plus rules on the matrix, there was a lot of scrolling. So there are some nice ways for you to easily see that information in one location. Yeah, it's good to know if you do edit, it is going to go down to the bottom and that's the line you edit. It's highlighting the rule and then you edit it down here. So if we did decide to do three, then we go ahead and save. It will repopulate that back where it goes under that garden tool. All right, excellent. Awesome. Okay, so next week, we are going to talk to you about adding rules if you are a multi-branch system. So we'll go through the process of adding individual rules for those locations. And then to wrap up the rest of the month, we'll talk about all of the other rules that tie in and the system preferences that control those rules. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be so fun. So fun. I'm excited about this circulation rule month. I am too. I don't want people to, to be scared of this page. So this is yeah. going to be great. This is going to be little tidbits of information. Maybe you didn't know. All right. Okay. Have a great week. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.